you never really know how much ambient noise is just happening around you until you start recording yourself and then you're like, man, this video's junk because all I can hear is planes and the neighbors vacuum and trash cans and just, oh, it's crazy. Uh, I've got a film to and stuff like that. I've got a film to do today. Uh, I got two sheep. I do hundreds and hundreds of sheep. I do hundreds of pigs. I do hundreds of deer. And every once in a while I get one that's just unique. It's just fantastic, whether it's its shape or its size or whatever. And those are the ones I wanna share with you. I could never do a video on every skull I do because then I would never finish a skull. So. I was looking at this skull, I believe it's a black Hawaiian, and I was thinking, man, that thing's cool because it's so much different. And it's just uh, crazy to me how we look at something like an animal, we think, oh, he's, he's super unique because he's so much different than everything else. And in the human world, there's that person that's just so much different that we frown on them or look down on them or make fun of them. It's just easy to do, it's our nature. So. I don't even know why I said it, but I just sometimes there's a little reality check like, hey, be nice, unique is special, right? You're special if you're not unique, but the ones that are actually unique, they're special too. Okay, anyway, here we go. Check this thing out. Uh, well, let's do both of them. I believe this is just a world-class Texas doll, I think. But look at this curly Q, man. Tell me he is not awesome. I think it was shot in the horn or it's damaged, but that's at least two curls. I have found that on YouTube, I, I really believe that the thing they don't want me doing is skinning. I think that's the trigger that's getting everything demonetized. Hold a half second. If something has an actual face and then I remove that face with a knife, I think to the uh, the side of the world that's unfamiliar with that, that's the part that's like, that's not okay. This is just me trying to get perspective and try to stay in this platform doing the right thing. So these have already been skinned. They're just ready to go. So step number one, remove all that stuff. If you wanna share it, plan on not being able to share it for very long. Uh, you guys, there's so many back videos that show it. If you want to know how to skin something, just click on any one of the other skull cleaning videos. Ultimately, as you put your knife between the skin and the bone, you're just going to cut that webbing. If you hit something hard, turn your knife the other way. Really, really easy. It's just a practiced thing. So I've removed eyes, removed everything. I'm just going to put this right down in a pot of clear water, both of them. I'm gonna bring it to a boil, and then I'm gonna take a, a sand hammer and I'm gonna try and smack these horns off. These horns will come right off. Like if this was the sheath of a knife and the horn core was the knife, it'll just come right off. I stopped my little rant there because instead of just telling you, I'm gonna tell you and show you. So both skulls right down in a pot of clear water and bring that bad boy to a boil. Now, a little something I've said a few times before in the past, but if you're new here, I'm going to repeat everything one more time. Sheep with dark black horns are much softer than sheep with white horns. So I always like to remove the black ones first. They're a little softer. Here, I'm just going to take a sand hammer and smack it right on the crown of that horn. What I'm trying to do is shock that outer horn off the core once I've got the horns off the horn core, I'm gonna take and cut that horn core shorter so it's less to wash and it fits back together nice. And then I'm gonna take those horns and soak them in clear water just so no flies get in there until I can deal with them. Okay, one more look. This is that big Texas doll. I'm gonna do the exact same thing full commitment smack on that hammer. If you do it against the ground, it creates downward pressure and upward pressure and just pops them things right off. 
I also want to stress to you that depending on the shape of that horn, you need to make sure you're not smacking the nose of the skull against the ground. You will absolutely break it. It needs to be horn against the ground. If you're concerned about scratching, put a piece of cardboard on the bottom. L smacko. Next step, you can see here that the skin on top of this nose has split. It means we've boiled long enough to start washing. Using a power washer, whatever you got, you want to spray into every hole and every orifice. Anywhere there's meat or tissue, make it go away. Once I've washed enough to see the ear canal, I stick a screwdriver right down his ear canal, the auditory bool, and I pop it out. Then I take a 5 8 wafer bit and I knock all that bone out. I make a real nice, clean cylindrical hole. Then I take four steps and I pull out all that nasal cavity. I just pick and pull, and then I get right back to washing. With them skulls 98% clean, I drop them into a batch of what I call the white bone creations mix. Essentially, it's 40% by volume, liquid peroxide, and water. I'm mixing about 70-30, 70% water, 30% peroxide. I'm gonna bring that to a boil, and while that's working, I'm gonna wash up those horns in and out. I stick that power washer right down in that thing and make sure everything is cleaned up. Getting these things clean is our number one priority. Now that the peroxide and water has come to a boil, I turn off the heat. At that point, I'm going to pull them out and repeat the process of power washing them clean. Whatever's on that skull that we didn't get off in the initial boil is going to be a placky, gelatinous something. You'll be able to hit that with the power washer. It'll come right off. And then I wanna make sure that that bone is touching the chemical. So once everything's gone, put it back in the peroxide mix for just a second, then pull it out, rinse it, and let it dry. Does anybody ever get on one of those trends where you're just like, man, I'm getting so good at my craft like amazing and then you go on to those trends where you're like I should rethink what I do because I'm not good at this every once in a while I get a batch of pigs that makes me think I'm not the greatest skull guy and then I lost all audio whoops so from this point you want to make sure everything is really really dry I got in the habit of taking a blower and sticking it down that horn and making sure there's no moisture in there I can also tell by smelling if there's anything wrong with the horn core. I harp on this because two times I had something get into a horn and it made me feel terrible. Next, 
I dry fit these horns. I just slide them right on top of the horn core with no adhesive or anything to make sure they fit nice and tight. Then I take and I run a little countersunk drill bit in the back of the horn where you can't see and I run screws in there to hold those horns in place. This is me learning my lesson from gluing horns on. You can glue them if you're a thousand percent sure that there's nothing in there. But I'm telling you, these two times where I had something in there, it was all I could do to get those horns off, get them clean, and put them back together. Then I cover everything in a coat of flooring mop and glow and let it dry. I repeat this process on the other sheep, and we'll pick it up here in a second. <laughs> ah, big curls. Check them out. Whoo! This thing had the worst, like, brain cancer I've ever seen or bone. I don't know what it is, but the whole top of his head is just like falling apart. I know it looked a little funny when I was working on it, but. I was like, what in the world? And then it just started to fall apart. So, and then this is kind of the piece that I thought was the coolest. Look at that. Curly monster. Old curls. Heck yeah. Wouldn't it be nice? Am I in the frame? Wouldn't it be nice if we treated people the way we treat animals. Everybody I know, I've never met anybody that didn't love animals and wouldn't do anything for them. So, yeah, maybe that's a good conversation to have. Love people like we love animals. Thank you, like always, for watching. Clean them skulls up and get them on the wall. Bye-bye,